What's up, guys? Welcome back. Hope you guys are having a good summer so far. I know what you might be thinking. Uh, Cozy, the, the title's a little clickbaity, right? Uh, is it going to really change everything? Yes, it's going to change everything. I truly think what we just got introduced or leaked or data mined is not only the new card mechanic on the roadmap, but what is going to fundamentally change Marvel Snap competitive-wise and just how we play it all together. All right, now starting off in the Young Avengers season, kicking off in August, we have quite literally probably one of my favorite season pass cards to date in Hawkeye, Kate Bishop. Now, this is like a Nico Minaru kind of card and just, again, anything that can generate cards and give you a nice curve and, and all these having great abilities to that uh, is not only a lot of fun to play, but also what we've seen from the past, extremely competitive. And Kate Bishop is a two-cost, three-power card with honor reveal. She's going to add two arrows to your hand. Now, kind of like the spells and Nika, what do the arrows do? Well, guys, they're all just good. Good stats, good curve, and they can all synergize with not only existing cards, but new ones to come. We've got the Pym Arrow. That is essentially an Ant-Man, but maybe one less power. Definitely not bad to get for free and not even putting it in your deck. You know, like obviously you can synergize with things like Spectrum decks or just a nice filler to throw into Zoo or whatever you might be playing this into. Uh, the Grapple Arrow is a one cost three power card. Again, just... Good stats for a one-cost card, and on reveal, your next card you play will move it to where the grapple arrow is. And anytime we get more uh, effects to move is great. Uh, you know, I am a little bit hesitant to say she's a great move card because uh, we're getting a lot of those here in a moment, and you don't know if you're going to get this arrow, and you can't quite depend on it. Uh, but still good for some tricks up the sleeve and, and different combos you can pull off. You have the basic arrow, which is j just quite literally Hawkeye with an honor reveal, kind of gives a bounce flavor to the deck. And Acid. And this is the, this is the broken. This is the arrow you want every single time. One cost, negative two power. Pretty much just a better Green Goblin. Yeah, I think Kate's going to be a good card, guys. I definitely like the feel of it. Nico's a bit more flair, if you will, whereas Kate's just like good stats most of the time. A little bit of tech in there with like moving and switching sides and whatnot uh but just a great card to add into most collections loki players balance uh, and just a good plug and playable card with a bunch of unique outcomes uh, you've seen me and other people recommend nico is one of the most you know important cards to add to the collection because of how much she can do for a variety of decks and i kind of think the same with kate bishop here going to be good in spectrum going to be good in zoo decks and plenty of other ones at that uh, yeah, uh, this is a good one. All right, next up, we have Marvel Boy, who was quite legitimately over the top busted when they first leaked him. This is why I'm glad I'm covering all this later. Uh, they've already adjusted him in this newest patch. He's gone from a 3-3. He's now at a 3-2, and he's still completely insane. But after each turn, he's going to give three of your one-cost cards plus one power. Now, this is completely wild, guys. This is coming out on the same week as Kate Bishop, and that's going to just be awesome synergy, but complete chaos. Now, before, uh, right now, he was giving plus two power to every one cost card every turn. That was completely stupid and way over the top, and this is still really good. This is an insane card. If you play something as simple as a Squirrel Girl, you're going to get insane value out of Marvel Boy here, and I just love the kit. I mean, Kyera Zoo decks are already all on the rise. We've got the Gilgamesh Zoo, Zoo going on, Sasquatch, Mockingbird. You can add Marvel Boy to the equation. Uh, and then note, there's no ongoing effect here. You can't take this from Marvel Boy. Just good value stats. And you can even play him late. Like, it's not like he's the worst card if you play him late on top of that. Just a cool card. Uh, a really good one at that. And we're going to be kicking off August uh, with a bang. All right, guys, next up, love this new ramp mechanic. We have Wiccan, who's a four-cost, five-power card. And on reveal, if you spend all of your energy this game, plus two max energy for the rest of it. Now, a little confusing maybe to read, but essentially we're trying to spend energy on turn one, two, and three, or until you play Wiccan and uh, you're able to get plus two max energy, supercharge yourself ramp-wise for the rest of the game. And this is super cool and really interesting to me for a couple of reasons. First of all, we're going to have, finally, for no a non-ironic reason, Quicksilver and Domino might have a reason to be played in these style of decks. You can guarantee play them, get the energy spent, and then you can get Wiccan out there to, to do some shenanigans, maybe in something like a Silver Surfer deck where you can play a couple cards on five and six and just go bananas. But more so, it, what intrigues me about this is is doing a line where you've got Psylocke or Zapu in the deck, maybe Quicksilver as well, or a lot of one-drops, I'm not sure. 
And then you're able to play Wiccan on three, which allows you to play four, five, and six with six cost cards. Absolutely crazy to me the different synergy here. Maybe Zabu gets played again, or Psylocke is going to get more play with Wiccan decks. I love the synergy with Quicksilver. You know, these are uh, Scarlet Witch's kids, and so it's Speed's brother. We're going to get to him here in a moment. Uh, but yeah, just really cool in the, uh, you know, the design. And I love energy cheating cards, and Wiccan adds a unique feel to the mix. Now let's go ahead and talk about Wiccan's brother, Speed, who's a three cost, three power card with the ongoing effect of getting plus one power for each turn in which you spent all of your energy. Let's talk about speed. First of all, I like cards right off the rip that uh, aren't great stats when you put them out there, but they come with a con effect sometimes like Gladiator, and you have to earn that power over the course of the game. You're wanting to play your energy every turn anyway, so it just continues to reward you with power as you do what you're set out to do in the first place. Uh, kind of works with Wiccan a little bit, which is fun, uh, unless you play Wiccan and then it's even harder to achieve. Uh, I, I, I don't think he's going to be the greatest when we talk about all the cards. He's certainly not the highest ranked, but he is just good stats being a 3-7, 3, seven, three, eight, three nine on a regular basis. Uh, my only issue is uh, where exactly are we going to want to play him? Because Surfer is so tight, a lot of competition there all the time. We're getting more three cost cards. Fastos is coming out. Uh, literally, uh, he already came out today. So we've got a lot of, uh, of competition for speed, but I do think he'll have a unique role in the game. Uh, you could play... You know, maybe him with the onslaught, probably not, but you get the plus one power twice. It is retroactive on how it works, uh, but he'll be cool in addition to the game and maybe not completely suck uh, as a speedster. And that takes us to the last card in the August season, an Emperor Hulkling. Now he's a six cost, 11 power card. And at the start of the game, he's going to copy the text of a random six cost card in the game. There are just, there are so many six cost cards that this can go bananas for uh there are a couple maybe that hurt you like agatha maybe like i don't know even like apocalypse though you still have an 11 power card and so the base power at that is is what gets me excited but i think this is going to be probably one of the biggest cube stealing cards in the game because right off the rip you know exactly what you have maybe you have a 611 arnim zola a 611 leader all these are going to be stupid stats maybe galactus you just play early like there are so many different cars that he can take advantage of she hulk scar energy reduction there's no way that this guy is gonna fall flat even if it's random you know what he is from the get-go you don't have to play him but if you do you get nice power very little cards are gonna bite you for having him in the deck i think he's gonna be one of those plug and play just awesome fun cards to have and just it's gonna be in a lot of my decks personally and one of the stronger ones of the season i can't really think of a super bad six cost that again you have the option to play outside of maybe like agatha all right so that's all the young avenger cards let's go ahead and rank these in, in order of what i think is going to be the best to the worst and we got to i think hulkling is going to be the best i think competitive wise fun wise this is the card man this is the card of the season i'm going to put him at number one number two is still going to go to marvel boy i think he did get tuned down a bit but still a very good value card at that and it's the rest of these have a lot of potential to be great or, you know, mid at that. I, I think I'm probably going to put... It's close, but probably Kate Bishop and Wiccan are right neck and neck. Both have, you know, I think Kate Bishop is more flat and has just great upside, whereas Wiccan could have crazy upside and downside. Speed is not a horrible card, but is the worst in the season. And if you think these cards are cool, awesome. They have nothing compared to next season because next season... And uh, by next season, I mean September. The newly leaked cards today bring a brand new mechanic to the game. We're just going to jump right into it. All right, guys, buckle up. We've got ourselves the Madam Web season. And we have a couple things to break down before the cards. First of all, the season pass card is Symbiote Spider-Man. He's a four cost, six power card. Now notice he's got a new word right there. Not on reveal, not ongoing, not nothing, but activate. So here it is, guys. This is what I think is going to change Marvel Snap completely. All right, we've got a new word, activate pure speculation we don't know exactly what it is yet but we have a good idea of what it's going to be and if it is this is truly going to change the way we play snap the way you play people what they could do what you can do this is going to be awesome and let's talk about it so activate in my opinion is going to be most likely an effect that you can activate one time at any point during the game so if you have a one cost card with activate you can activate that on turn two three four five six and whatever it might be will then take effect that turn or the turn after whatever the card might say uh odin had the word activate in his his kit and then they removed it and so 
I don't think it's going to be an on reveal thing as much as a, uh, like maybe a tap it like Howard the Duck. He's ongoing. You can do that multiple times. I think activate is going to be a one time thing, right? And this is going to be so much brain games, right? Like vision is powerful because you can move him and your opponent has to guess where you're going to move him. You can now have that ability with one card and just kind of chill and wait to do your big power move once you get enough combo pieces or once you get other, you know, puzzle pieces in the deck, you can choose which route to go with these activate cards. Now, let's talk about Symbiote Spider-Man. Back to the graphic here. I was a 4-6 and that ability activate. Merge your lowest cost card here with this. And you're going to copy its text like it just revealed. Now, I don't think this could be any more confusing uh, if they tried. There's a lot to sort out here. And so now that we have our first activate card, let me give you what my thoughts are on it. First of all, it says revealed ED. I don't think this is going to be like an Odin, a Grandmaster. You can absorb an Iron Heart and use the Iron Heart again. I don't think that's how it's going to work. My question is, is when do you activate it? Do you activate it before you play it? Does it have to be like Howard the Duck and you click on it to activate to then merge? Which doesn't make a lot of sense with this card because then that would only give you turn six to have that ability to work. And that just kind of seems wonky. So maybe it's the turn that you play him out. He'll then merge. There's a lot to take into consideration here. The only thing I'm more certain of and not positive is that I don't think he's going to completely just let you do an on reveal effect again. I'm not sure, but I don't think Galactus in his location, he'll, you know, absorb Galactus and then you can play that. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but also kind of weird is he's the season pass card, which also means we don't have a lot of activate cards out yet. It's the season of activate. I see him being the leader of such in a way but we would only have one card to use the actual effect with them until we get more throughout the season, which kind of makes sense because second is probably going to try to sell the cards in the season and maybe you need this one or you have to have this one to get the most value. Whatever way you look at it, he's, he clears up space on a location, but also is going to be the Odin per se or the Grandmaster or the Onslaught in some senses of activate cards and is going to be an absolute essential piece to a lot of the decks in Marvel Snap to come because I'm assuming we're going to get a lot of activate cards here in the future. So really cool design. We're going to cover some activate cards and you guys are going to start to see why this effect seems so powerful to me. Do you guys think it's going to be activated when you play it? You're going to have to tap it to activate it. Tell me what you think. But either way, I think this is going to be a fun season. All right, so let's talk about those activate cards. And we go to Aranya. <laughs> Sorry, guys. That's, I'm as white as you could be saying it. I, it means spider in Spanish, but I, I already know I botched how to say it most likely. But anyway. Uh, it's got an activate to give the last card you played plus two power and you move it to the right. So Spider here, I'm just going to keep calling her Spider. I don't want to keep botching it. 2-2, uh, two, two, great, but move is going to love this. This is what's really going to transcend move to the next level. Making sure you have the puzzle pieces you need or making sure to move until the time is right is exactly what the archetype needs. And I think it's going to add another strategy piece to make it awesome. But on top of that, it's the last card you played, right? So you can play something down, uh, you know, maybe on turn four and then turn five, get it over to Sanctum because you activate it. I love the idea that you can activate it. Uh, what seemingly is at any time, you also get the power to it as well. So this is going to be cool for uh, maybe Angela Dex, which we'll get to those in a little bit. Uh, but being able to do that with Human Torch Dagger when you need to, Vulture, and most importantly, Hercules, you're going to see is a big winner from activate and all these new cards because it was so wonky getting them down because then you needed move effects after that. And now you can kind of wait to use the move effect. I actually hope they were to add activate to Heimdall. I guess that wouldn't really work too well. Uh, but either way, this is going to be a huge puzzle piece alongside all the other ones coming. Uh, and then keep in mind, we also have Symbiote Spider-Man that could do this effect again. She's a low uh, cost, low power car. So he would naturally absorb Spider over here. Uh, but either way, I think this is a really cool example of how Activate is going to take an archetype to that next level. And that takes us to our next activation card, Scarlet Spider. A four cost, five power card. And guys, get this. His Activate ability, add an exact clone of this to another location. All right, now, first of all, I swear to God, we already have a variant of this card. We've got the Spider-Man with the hoodie. So are they going to... That, that, I think that's Scarlet Spider. So are they going to take that? And are they gonna are they gonna put it into his variant section? Fun fact: This was the uh, the thumbnail for the uh, one of my like biggest videos I think today, and like one of my first ones uh, for uh, 20 tips. And think about redoing that to do advanced tips. But besides the point, how cool is this ability, right? So you can play down the four or five. Let's say you're playing a Cerebro five deck. 
at any point in time, you can clone an exact copy of this card, which is cool. You have two, four, fives. That's obviously just good value. Four, ten is stupid in, in two lanes. But on top of that, you can do it at any point in time. So think about it. You can add boost to it like Forge and make it, you know, a 4-7 and split it right away. Or you can continue to boost it up with like an Iron Heart on an Odin, whatever, right? Get it to a 4-15 and then you can split it. Or a Shuri and then you split it. This is awesome. And even more so because you can then do the same with the Symbiote that's coming out as the Season Pass card. So this is where the potential goes through the roof. I, do, I read this card. I'm just getting it. I read this card and it made me think, wow, this is going to surely change up the way the game is played in so many ways. You have to account for so many cards. I think Activate, in my opinion, is going to be near the top of the tier list on most cards released because it's that option. It's that mind games you're playing. And I almost feel like they should come with a, not a stat con, but you don't want to make them terrible cards. But like that is such a powerful thing in itself. I love Scarlet Spider-Man as a character. Really cool also as a card. Uh, let me know also down below, guys. All right, let's see the comments. Do they move the variant? Do they move the variant to this one from Spider-Man? They're starting to do kind of two characters in one, and it's going to get a little sticky. All right, now this next card is Silver Sable, guys. And uh, hey, listen, if you've been watching for a while, you know I love this card. It used to be a 2-6, and you could only play it on a location with like 6-plus power. That would have been insane just for like where she would land on the two cost cards she's now a one cost card with one power equally great on reveal you're gonna steal two power from the top card of your opponent's deck mama mia this is gonna be a good card i think this is uh cool that it's a one five kind of technically uh she's gonna always be a one three when she goes out on the board but she's stealing from the card uh from that your opponent was gonna play or at least gonna draw uh they don't have to play it but we know Affliction is great. I love the idea that uh, she's just flat out messing up your opponent while also being decent stats at that. You can bounce her back. You can reactivate her. There's a couple things that you can do uh, to really get the best use of Silver Sable. Uh, this is just a cool curve play, man. I love Spider-Ham, you know, for getting him out there early. And this feels very much the same. I think she's going to be a, a, a pretty unique and great card. There's a lot of good cards this season. And I don't know if she'll be at the top of that list, but definitely... Uh, great. Definitely a card you're going to want to put into a lot of different decks. Now, some great cards, guys, but I, I don't think anything comes close to this next one, our last one. Madam Web, a two-cost, three-power card with an ongoing ability of you can move one of your other cards away from here each turn. Oh, my God. First of all, the movie for this was awful. Uh, but second, more importantly, and, and on subject, you guys remember when they, they nerfed the Space Stone because it was a little bit too crazy? This is it. This is the Space Stone, but every single turn. Massive. Massive implications. Even if you hate move, massive implications. Angela Dex. Hope Summers. You got that kind of style already. We love that. We love what she can do there. But on top of that, just cool to not flood a location up. Or maybe you can commit to a location and at any point decommit and put a bigger card there. We know how important that is in Marvel Snap. It's why move cards are played so much. But then you add the move mechanic to it. Hercules skyrockets in value, I would imagine. Human Torch, Vulture, Dagger. You move them away. They build up. You put them back. You, you, you find ways to put them back with the grapple arrow or whatever. Madam Web is the new cog in the machine. The Onslaught, the Odin, whatever of their archetype for movement. And this is all coming with the activate cards as well. All right, let's talk final rankings. They're all good. <laughs> They're all legitimate, just great contenders of cards as is. With the Symbiote, I forgot to also talk about, like, the fact that you can re-trigger cards as they revealed. So, you know, uh, Negasonic has a one-time use, but then you could redo that one. Or, you know, maybe another example. I, I can't think of another one off the top of my head, but the cards that only have a one-time use and you could uh, then use again is really powerful alongside Activate cards. The new mechanic is definitely going to change up a lot. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed uh, a leaked video. I don't do these a lot. Like I said, it takes a lot uh, for me to get videos out there, guys. And these come out, you know, other people can spit these videos out in like 10 minutes. I just can't. I can't do that. And so I don't do them often. But I thought how big of a change this is. Really needed to talk about it as a subject. Let me know. I got to know top three out of all the ones I talked about today. Drop it in the comments down below. And uh, I'll go ahead and get the season pass. Uh, for the next one coming out to a couple of you guys. Anyway, have a good one. Have a great one. Till the next one. Happy snapping.